Rainbow Arena. One hundred and fifty four thousand eight hundred and twenty eight people have died of coronavirus. Fortunately, five hundred and eighty one thousand one hundred and eighty two have recovered. As we continue to fight against this disease, I want to emphasize the issues that I have said, including hygiene, washing your hands, and all the other practices that we have said. But I also want to add and emphasize the importance of nutrition, hydration, and physical activity. The experience we are having is that nutrition, hydration, and physical activity increase our immunity, and therefore, people are able to overcome the disease better. Consumption of a healthy diet and engaging in regular physical activities helps to strengthen our immune systems, lower the risk of chronic illness and infectious diseases, and also speed up recovery from illnesses. While on this, I must say that we have noted with serious concern about the non-factual food and nutrition information going around on social media on the healing effects of certain foods or drinks. This is not the time to confuse our people or to engage in publicity theatrics. While we encourage acts of charity, we advise Kenyans to get factual public health information from credible sources such as professional health care providers, the Ministry of Health, and the World Health Organization websites. Fellow Kenyans, the extraordinary times we are living in demand extraordinary sacrifices, understanding and awareness from each and every one of us. Our common heritage is a people is under immense threat, and our limits as a society is being tested to its core. I have said this before, that this is the time for all of us to fight from the same side. If we do not do that, this virus will get the better of us. The measures we have so far put in place, which include the targeted mass testing, offer an opportunity to effectively fight this war. And we, we fight together, not against each other. To our brothers and sisters in quarantine and isolation centers, we know what you are going through. Most of you have kept the promise, except for a few who have wavered. Everybody is being called upon to make a little sacrifice. It is much better to be counted as among those who helped keep COVID-19 at bay than to be counted as the inconsiderate few who have failed to appreciate the danger that this pandemic presents. What is required is a little bit more patience, sacrifice and understanding from you, your families, friends, and Kenyans at large. We are also aware that within the same institutions, a number of people are going to the extent of offering bribes to get out of quarantine facilities. This is wrong. I am aware, for example, that in the county of Mandela, there, is, there are people, and I've been, this can, has been confirmed to me by the governor, that there are people who bribed their way out of quarantine. Both those who did that and those who let them off will face the full force of the law. We 
are aware that there has been administrative lapses which have been raised. We have listened and we have heard. The National Emergency Response Committee is fully appraised and is responding to those concerns. There is room for improvement in management of quarantine facilities to ensure that the sacrifices being made are meaningful. We have issued the requisite directives and we shall be moving around to ensure that every concern raised is addressed and your role in containing this virus is acknowledged and appreciated accordingly. On a related matter, I have said time and again that the public needs to be alert to the proliferation of fake news on COVID-19 COVID virus. We have also noted that there are people who are not complying with the movement restrictions in and out of counties and even from neighboring countries. On this, I want to caution truck drivers who are informed as smuggling people from one restricted area to another. I want to tell such irresponsible persons that they are lowering back our efforts to fight this disease. The enforcement agencies are there to deal with these issues, not to become participants in it. I am informed, for example, and this illustrates exactly what we are saying. The governor of Homer Bay informed me this morning of a group of people who traveled from Nairobi in a vehicle, in a private vehicle, pretending that they were attending a funeral, fully equipped with an empty coffin to illustrate that indeed that is who that they were mourners. Those people traveled all the way from Nairobi during this period when we have stopped movement from Nairobi. They managed to come from Nairobi, traveled all the way to Homer Bay, and thanks to the Homer Bay Authority, Governor's Authority, and administration, somebody got suspicious. And on opening the coffin, obviously, found out what I am now informing you. They were immediately put in quarantine. And today, I can confirm that the driver is positive. This is what we are talking about. This person has now taken the disease to Homa Bay where we have now tested the first positive case in Homabe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I am telling Kenyans. That until and unless we become self-disciplined, this disease is going to finish us. Somebody has now exported the disease to Homabe. Why? For very selfish reasons. I am even told that uh, in, in the vehicle are some very respectable, very respectable individuals. So I just want to reiterate once again the importance of maintaining the values that we are trying to impact in people, including social distancing when using public transport. Again here, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, I am informed that there are people transporting even in Matatus into and out of the city. And once they get to a roadblock, they pay and come round the roadblock and walk and are taken again by an empty vehicle or otherwise. In other words, transporters are organizing themselves to pick at each point where there is a roadblock. I am also informed that there are individuals who now have decided that if you come from Nairobi and they know that you came from Nairobi, then they call the authorities and let them know instantly 
I want to applaud those people. I want to say that if we all participated, if you inform the police, when you know that there is a person who is not supposed to be there, who is there, then we will handle this disease better. I am not trying to incite Kenyans against each other, but I am trying to say that information about a person who you know very well was in Kisumu or Nyeri or Mombasa and you know that they, they are now in Nairobi and they are not supposed to be here, please inform the police, inform the authorities because that person may, may very well be your killer. Fellow Kenyans, this is not a time for cat and mouse games. And going forward, what the people who are modeling for us are telling us is that depending on the level of discipline, that the results for this country, the number of people who will die in this country, or the number of people who will not die in this country, we will depend purely on the, on the level of discipline that we exhibit going forward. They are modeling, there are models that say that we could lose as many as 28,000 Kenyans dead as a result of this disease unless we start observing certain measures and ensuring that we do social distancing and everything, every other measure that we have been told. So, fellow Kenyans, Kenya is on red alert. The numbers are rising steadily. In the last 24 hours, we have, tested, we have doubled our testing capacity to test 1,115 samples. Out of these 16 have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. We are now 262 the number of confirmed cases in our country. By now, you'll have noticed that the higher the samples, the higher the number of cases. This speaks both to the urgency to test Kenyans in the targeted areas I have said, and for every Kenyan to assume that the person next to you is a contact who could be carrying the disease. 15 of these cases who have tested positive are Kenyans and one is a foreigner. 12 male and 4 female. None of those has a history of travel and none of those cases are in our quarantine centers. 9 from Nairobi, 5 from Mombasa and as I said 1 from Homabay County aged between 23 and 84 years old. And I can also add here that the 84 years old was a person who also uh, believed in treating people via herbal medicines, herbalist. I'm delighted to announce also that we have seven people discharged today, bringing the number of recoveries to 60. And I want to thank our healthcare workers, those who have been taking care of these people. I want to thank the doctors, the nurses, because it is through your effort that those 60 people can now, can now join their families. But at the same time, I am also sad to say we have lost an additional two more patients, bringing the number of those dead to 12. And I want to send our condolences uh, to the families of the two victims. In terms of distribution of age now, we know that um, there are eight people who are aged between 0 and 14 years. There are 70 people 
between the ages of 15 and 29. There are 164 people between the ages of 30 and 59, and we have 20 who are above 60. Ladies and gentlemen, to bring this matter home closer to those of us who live in Nairobi, let me emphasize this, that there is no estate now that doesn't have an individual around you who may well be positive. For example, and these are just pure examples, in the Kilimani area, there are six cases in the Kilimani area. We have three. We have picked from the Kawangware, Kawangware area. Karen has five people. Pipeline estate, pipeline estate has five individuals. Utawala has four. Mulolongo, we got somebody. As you know, Isili, there was an imam who was uh, preaching and who was going to various houses has died of COVID. So what we are saying in, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is no place that is not affected. If you go to Buruburu, we have got cases in Buruburu, we have got cases in Utawala, we have got cases in Tasia, we have got cases in Parklands, and so we have got a, a case in Donholm, Harlingham, Madaraka, and, and, and others also who are, who are on the list. Gara, we have two cases in Gara, and the two cases in Gara presented themselves to a clinic and are positive. So because of this, we are also advising all health workers, all health workers, whether you work in a private farm, in a private clinic, whether you work in a government clinic, whether you are the receptionist, or whether you are the askari in that health, uh, in that health facility, because you do not know whether the next person who walks in there will be a positive case, please protect yourself all the time, and ensure you are wearing a mask under no circumstance should you receive a patient without the necessary protection and protection is now available ppes are available as we have said so i want to plead to all of us to take measures that we have announced seriously let's take what we are saying seriously because what i do know is that if we do so we can be a perfect example of a people living in harmony and a people who have, dis who, have, who have defeated what others in the world have been unable to defeat. We can overcome, fellow Kenyans, we can overcome this disease. We can beat it. But only if, only if we appreciate, this is not a government disease. This is your disease. And this is my disease. If we appreciate that, then we can and should overcome. Thank you very much. Kenyatta National Hospital concerning two suspected cases, and we are informed that they later passed on. So who are these people how did the tests turn out and what is the government version on the same well first and foremost i think that uh, the information that uh, you get from anywhere can only be confirmed here by the ministry of health so if you have any other information then i'm not aware of that one next yes yeah. uh, citizen tv um the there is according to your speech it appears there is need for urgent mass testing. 
when is this going to start for Kenyans and what is the matrix in terms of how are you going to what are the priority areas number two uh, you have uh, you have given figures on the number of people in almost all the estates in Nairobi are there more stringent measures that the government intends to take within Nairobi uh, uh, for instance interlocking the estates to ensure there is no uh, further spread from one estate to the other thank you thank you very much um Yes, the last one. Uh, my name is Kennedy Meredi from NTV. There is the question of Kenyans who are outside the country and probably in Beijing or in the Chinese countries. And some of them we've seen are even in the streets because they do not or nobody is attending to them. Is the Kenyan government willing to evacuate such Kenyans? Because we've actually even seen a tweet saying that they will be evacuated at their own cost. How is this going to happen or is the government actually even re looking into it because they are on the streets? Then the other question is, the other day you showed us a mask with Kenyan colors and you say that it is going for five shillings. You did not answer the question on where Kenyans can actually get this mask. It's a question that has been coming to our newsrooms. How are Kenyans going to get these masks at five shillings? Last one. hospital discharged uh, patients who are yet to get well uh, in the spirit of decongesting and keeping them safe but how are they going to get essential services and right now we are told they are at most at risk because they tend to relapse when there is such a um, scare and, and sorrow. Thank you very much. Um, well, first of all I am not aware that uh, I am not aware of such information. If uh, the doctor is aware he will respond to that. Um, Kenyans outside, uh, can we are uh, discussing this matter, and in fact it was the subject of a discussion only yesterday between ourselves and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, the, the, um, the government will take certain measures. We are discussing it. We have not actually arrived at any conclusion uh, at the moment, uh, essentially because of the state of affairs, you know there are no flights going in and out. If it's a question of, evacu of evacuation, it's which countries do you evacuate from? Which ones do you leave out? There are all these questions to be, uh, to be answered. Um, on the issue of um, the mask, the five bob mask, well, I am actually told that the price is now 20 shillings. So you have to buy it at 20 shillings. You should have bought it when it was five bob. <laughs> Where? Where? <laughs> You see me closely. <laughs> see me. There are two costs of a uh, of price of uh, of mass. I'm told now. One of them is um, you know there is market testing. There's something called market testing. You sell something cheaply. When people get to buying it, you increase the price. It's called marketing. Now there are now I believe 20 bob. You can buy a mass for 20 shillings, and we know that we are mass producing them at 20 shillings. There are also more expensive masks. The reusable, the reusable ones, I'm told, are about 50 bob, but you can use it for a long time, for a long time um, going forward. Uh, the stringent measures that we can take, Steve, you know, I don't know why. I don't know why people would want the government to tell them what to do to save themselves. Because, Steve, we have told people don't live out of Nairobi, stay in Nairobi. We have people going out of Nairobi? Yes. We are telling people, stay at home. If you stay at home, you will not pass this disease to anybody else, and nobody else can pass it to you. So even when people say lockdown, if you are so keen on locking down, why don't you lock yourself down first? <laughs> because there is no reason why you can't lock yourself down. You know, why, why does it have to be Mutai Kagwe to lock you down? Or President Uhuru Kenyatta? You can lock yourself. So. It's, it's very difficult, Steve, to understand um, uh, some of these uh, measures. But as for the tests, as for the tests, we are indeed, um, we have started, we have started the testing. That's why we see, we see us at over a thousand today. We have never hit a thousand before. So we are scaling it up, as every day you, you have more and more. And the targeting means simply that, for instance, in an area like Isili, where now we are seeing little pockets growing, you might hit Isili. Instead of just going to the streets and going anywhere else, go to Isili, test Isili. We have now started Mombasa, uh, KPA. It's an ongoing exercise as we speak. So it is targeted 
mass testing and it has been increased and the capacity is there now. So thank you all very much.